Hello guys and welcome back to the Teacher Made channel where everything is made by a teacher. Today we are going to have a sped talk today about how I write my annual IEP goals so stay tuned. Okay, okay guys welcome back to the channel. My name is Shannon. I am a special education resource teacher for all of you who don't know who I am. I teach children in grades kindergarten all the way up into fifth but now i am working with kindergarten through third grade so like i said earlier today we are going to talk about how i write my iep goals from start to finish and these are just annuals annual ieps not students who enter into the program or students who are up for reevaluation. This is strictly for students who have annual iep goals coming up and for people who don't know what annual means your child, any child that's in the Exceptional Children's Program, your child has an IEP and they receive an annual update of their academic goals every year that goes over their goals, that goes over their accommodations, and anything else that we see needs fit that we need to change throughout the IEP. So the first thing that I do for my annual is that I check their current data. And what I mean by that is I go over their current goals that they already have on their IEP. So say their IEP goal is um, when given 10 sight words, they'll be able to increase from knowing from five out of 10 to eight out of 10. So what I would do is I would go through a list of those sight words on their academic goals on their academic level so say they're in the third grade but they're performing about on a kindergarten level so i will give that child a list of those sight words that we were working on and out of 10 see if they increase from five to eight and if they already master out of that goal then i would just write a whole new goal and i would probably increase the intensity of the goal which is making that goal a little bit harder but also attainable so like i said the first thing I do is I collect data on their current goals. The second thing that I do after collecting data is I start to write their present level. So once I have collected the data, I'll go in the present level box, which talks about their strengths and then their needs. So first I'll write down in their strengths about what they can do. So maybe they can write their name independently or for that example earlier, maybe they are able to do eight out of 10 sight words. So they made some progress of retaining the sight words or gaining new goals, such as recognizing new words. And then I will go down. So I always do reading, math, written expression, and functional. I put that in all of my IEPs, whether they test it out of that area or not. And then after I have written the strengths, then I go down into the functional needs. And once again, in the reading, math, and writing, and functional area, I write, I type in what they struggle with, what they need help on. So maybe they need help with writing their name, or maybe they need help with reading comprehension. So I write down all, I type or <laughs> write down all of those in the functional needs. Then I go down into the findings section, which is me talking about where, what they started out with. So like that example earlier, they knew five out of 10 sight words. And then now I want them to know maybe eight out of, let's increase the intensity of the goal. So eight out of 15 or 10 out of 15. So I write down in the findings what they can do. And then I transfer those findings down to the goals. And then the goals is from, instead of from five out of 10 sight words, we wanna increase the goal to eight out of 15 or eight out of 10. It just depends on the child. You know, every child is different. That's why it's called an IEP. After I have finished the goals, you guys, then I move all the way down to the service area. And then I, based upon the goal, that the child is receiving. So maybe they need a lot of extra support in reading comprehension, sight words, reading fluency, or whatever they're working on. I do that. I do my service time based upon how many reading goals they have. Now, if they have like two reading goals, I may write their service time for 30 minutes. But if they have a lot of goals that they need to work on in areas of reading, writing, math, or behavior, or whatever skill they need to work on, then that's when I increase the service time. I have had students 
who I have maxed out. And what I mean by max out is that we increase the intensity of the service time from maybe 15 minutes all the way up into three hours. I remember I was doing my student teaching and my compliance facilitator had this student in her room that was in her room for three hours, you guys. But it was on and off throughout the school day. They weren't in there for the whole entire three hours right off, you know, the bat. But they throughout the day, they were, he started out as three hours and then she decreased the service time as he made improvement on his behavior. So after the service, then I moved down into the accommodations tab. And I believe the goals and the accommodations drive and the service time drive the meat of the IEP. So for the accommodations, based upon the child's functional needs, I write the accommodations. Maybe their accommodation is receiving extra time on a test. Um, you can have accommodations for repeat directions or giving extended time for an assignment. Another accommodation you can do is I had, when I was working in the self-contained classroom, I had a, a accommodation just, I've seen IEPs for just like a student or a child wearing, um, sweatpants. And you may think, why is that on there? Because the child had trouble buttoning and, fastening their jeans and they had saw an OT. So that was on their accommodation. So it's like I said, it just depends on the child and what they need. And like I said, the goals, the service time and the accommodations pretty much drives that child's IEP. And I enjoy writing IEPs. I know a lot of teachers, they struggle with. It takes me about a good, when you get really good at it, it takes me about a good two hours um, hour and a half to write an IEP and those four annuals. Now for reevaluations and initial, yes, it will take long because you have the student coming into the program and for the reevaluation, the student is already in the program, but there you are collecting so much data from different parts of people like the OT, the PT, the speech pathologist, and maybe new people may come in. So it just depends like I said, on the student, that's why it's called the Individualized Educational Plan. And after I have written that, then we move down into the testing accommodations. So whatever they're receiving in the classroom, they should also be receiving on their tests. And I know what this year, a lot of schools are canceling um, test administration and test cancellation. So after the test and accommodations, then I moved down into the extended school year tab. And that tab is based on whether the student is making growth throughout the year or not. Now the team may decide that they will have extended school year for that student and they will receive services over the summer. Or if you feel that the student or your child doesn't need extended school year, then you can mark that option as no. And then after that, then we move into the prior written notice, which is just a summary of everything that we talked about in the whole entire meeting. Um, from beginning to end, the goals, the accommodations, the service time, why we change this, why did we take off this goal, that is your prior written notice. And that is how I write my IEP, you guys. If you have any questions, drop down your comments in the comments box. Also, check out my other resources on this channel. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to share. Thank you.